all of the fair division methods that we've looked at thus far have been good for dividing continuous assets or assets that can be divided into smaller pieces but we now we need to look at a method that will allow us to divide discrete assets and so remember that discrete assets are assets that cannot be divided um, into pieces for example um, a house or um, a car or stocks or something like that so um, if you have an inheritance that have those three things that need to be divided if more than one uh, sibling includes house in their bid set there's no way that we can split that into fair shares so instead we have to come up with a way to still make sure that everybody gets their fair share without actually splitting up the assets themselves so the method of sealed bids allows for a fair division of discrete assets. However, it also requires each player to have cash on hand to make up for the differences in value of the various assets. So each party assigns in secret a dollar amount to each asset representing its worth. This is their sealed bid. That's the very first thing that has to happen. The next thing, we have to um, collect the bids and then determine each party's fair share. Because since the parties are going to value the um, items or assets differently, then their fair shares are also going to be different. Step three, we calculate the initial allocation. So in other words, we award each of the items or assets to the highest bidder. In the first settlement, we calculate each player's fair, fair dollar share and the value of the received assets. So if their asset is more than their fair share, then they have to pay the difference. If the assets they receive are less than their fair share, then they receive the difference. Once we do our first settlement, we then determine what the surplus is. So what we'll find is that if we always award the items to the highest bidder, then there will always be more money paid in than paid out. And so that's going to leave us with a division or I'm sorry, a surplus. And then we have to divide that evenly among the parties. And then the final step is to calculate the final settlement, which is to um, edit the first settlement with the surplus for each player. Now, some assumptions that we're going to make is that each player must have enough money to play. So in other words, if they're required to pay in a certain amount, then they must be able to pay that in. Each player must be willing to accept money as a substitute. So you cannot say, I don't care how much you offer me. I, I want that. You have to be willing to take money. You have to be able to um, assign a value to the assets. So you can't say it's priceless. You know, you have to be able to say it's worth $1,000 or $10,000. And this can be useful for divorce settlements and splitting up partnerships, assuming that all parties can hold to the rationality assumption. And of course, sometimes in divorces or partnership split ups, that isn't always the case, but we're making that assumption. So let's look at our first example of using the method of sealed bids. We have three friends that have a big argument and decide never to talk to one another again. They shared one prized possession, the burn book. The chart below represents how each girl values the book. So in the chart, we see that Amelia values the book at $300, Blair at $210, and Camille at $240. So now that we have their bids, we can find their fair share. So their fair share is going to be a third of whatever they valued the book at because there are three players and remember to find a fair share we take the value and divide it by n the number of players so for amelia her fair share is going to be a hundred dollars blair's fair share will be 70 and camille's will be 80. so now that we have determined each player's fair share we are ready to determine who is going to get the book well, remember the book goes to the player with the highest bid. So in this case, that would be Amelia. So Amelia is going to receive the book. And now we need to find the initial allocation. Well, Amelia received the book and it was worth $300. And she is entitled to her fair share, which is $100. So if she received an asset worth $300 and was only entitled to $100, 
then she's going to have to pay the difference between the value of the book she received and her fair share. So in this case, she's going to have to pay $200. Blair, on the other hand, had a fair share of $70 and did not receive any assets. So Blair is going to receive her fair share of $70. And Camille, again, did not receive any assets and has a fair share of $80. So Camille is going to receive her share, fair share of $80. Now notice that um, Amelia paid in and Blair and Camille both received. So this money actually comes from the $200 that Amelia paid in. However, this is where we have to account for the surplus because you will notice that Amelia paid in 200 and Blair and Camille only paid out or received $150. So there is a surplus. And where does that money go? Well, that money gets divided up evenly between the players, and then they each receive their portion of the surplus. So there's a $50 surplus. And notice that we found that by simply taking the amount paid in and subtracting the amounts that were paid out or received. So now to find the surplus, there's a $50 surplus. Each girl is entitled to a fair share of that. So we're going to divide the 50 by three. And we find that each party or player is entitled to $16.67 of the surplus. So now we can go back to our initial allocation and edit the amounts paid in or received with this surplus to find the final allocation. So initially, Amelia received the book and paid in $200. However, she's going to receive $16.67 from the surplus. So to find how much she actually has to pay, we find the difference between what she was initially paying and her portion of the surplus. So in the final allocation, she gets the book and she pays $183.33. With Blair, she received $70 initially. She receives an additional $16.67 from the surplus. So total, oh, and there's a typo. So this should actually be $86.67, not $76. So make that note in your notes um, that that is $86.67, not $76.67. And then for Camille, she initially received $80. She receives an additional $16.67 from the surplus. So she receives a total of $96.67. So with Amelia, because she had the initial uh, pay in, she was paying $200, then we have to find the difference in order to find how much she pays total. Since Blair and Camille both received, they we add their fair share of the surplus to find out how much they actually receive. And then the last thing that we want to do is check to make sure that our total paid in is matches the total received or paid out. So to do that, the only one who actually pays is Amelia. So that would be the total paid. And Blair and Camille both receive so we would take the 86.67 and the 96.67, and again, remember the typo here, and find that that is 183.34. And you'll notice that there is a one cent difference between the paid in and the paid out, or the paid and the received. And in a real life situation, you would simply have to award um, one penny less or make Amelia pay one penny more. And how you determine that would be determined before you started uh, dividing up the assets. Okay, so let's look at another example. We have Grandma leaves three large items, a cabin in the mountains, a vintage 1955 Royals Royce, and a Picasso painting to her four grandchildren, Art, Betty, Carla, and Dave. She includes a stipulation that the items must remain with the grandchildren, not to be sold to outsiders, and they must be divided fairly in equal shares among them. So first thing we always have to do is we have to find the bids of each player. 
So each grandchild independently and privately, and that's key, got to be private, makes a bid in dollars for each of the items in the estate, giving his or her honest assessment of the actual value of each item. And so here's our chart that shows the value of each item in each of the uh, children's eyes. So now that we know their values, we now need to calculate their fair shares. Well, in this case, because there are three different items, in order to find their fair share, we're going to have to total up the value in each player's eyes and then divide that by the total number of players. So in Art's case, we're going to take the cabin plus the Royals Royce plus Picasso, find that total, and then divide by, and be careful here, we're dividing by the number of players, not the number of items to be distributed. So there are four players. So we're going to divide each player's value by four to find their fair share. So Art has a total bid of 540,000, divide that by four, and we get his fair share of 135. Betty's total bids are 520, so we divide by four and get 130, and then the same, for, same thing for Carla and Dave. So now that we know each player's bids and each player's fair share amount, we are ready to find the initial allocation. So remember in the initial allocation, each item goes to the highest bidder. So in the case of the cabin, Betty bid more than anybody else, so Betty will receive the cabin. Dave bid highest on the car and Art bid highest on the painting. So the allocation is that Art gets the the Picasso, Betty gets the cabin, Carla receives no assets, and Dave receives the Royals Royce. So now that we know the initial allocation of items, we're ready, we're ready to find the initial settlement or the first settlement. So remember that settlements are based on the items received and their fair share. If they receive items that have value higher than their fair share, they're going to pay into the kitty. If they receive items worth less than their fair share, then they are going to receive from the amount. So in this case, Art received the painting worth 280000 Art's fair share was only 135000 so he received a painting worth more than his fair share. So to find out the how much he has to pay in, we find the difference between the painting and his fair share. So in this case, Art is going to receive the painting, but he's going to have to pay $145,000. Betty received the cabin for $250,000, which is more than her fair share, so she's going to have to pay $120,000. Carla did not receive any assets, so she's going to receive her fair share in cash. And Dave received the Royals Royce, which is worth less than his fair share, so he's going to receive the difference in cash. So now that we know the initial allocation, we're ready to find the surplus. Well, we had two players paying in, 145000 and 120000 We had two players receiving. 123 and 58, and if we find the difference in those two, we get the surplus of $84,000. And now remember that each player is entitled to one nth of that, or in this case, one fourth of that, so each player gets $21,000 of the surplus. So now that we know the surplus, we're ready to find the final settlement. So originally, Art received the Picasso and, and was paying $145,000. When we remove or subtract his amount of the surplus, we find that he gets the Picasso and pays $124,000. Betty gets the cabin and pays $99,000, the difference between what she was originally paying and her surplus. Carla was originally receiving money, so we add her surplus to get the total amount received. And Dave was also receiving, so we add his surplus to get the total amount received as well. Some observations about Grandma's estate is that each party received at least their fair share based on their evaluations. In reality, no money exchanged hands into the last step, 
and the value is dependent upon how much money they have.